New York's championship campaign came to an end Saturday after losing to Carlo by 15 points to 10. The Exiles led by two points at halftime, but Carlo took control of matters in the second half, outscoring New York by nine points to two for a fully deserved win. Journalist Kira Murphy caught up with New York defender Shane Bulger after the game, as well as manager Johnny McGinney. Kieran hosts the Across the Four Lakes podcast, which covers a range of Irish sports topics. A link to that show is in the description below. Shane Bulger, cornerback of the New York team that has just been beaten by Carlo in the Titan Cup. What's your thoughts, Shane? Uh, we had a good first half. We came out strong and we tried to play a bit defensive, drop men back and things seem, seemed to be going well. We came out in the second half and it probably didn't go as to plan because yeah. um, Carlo were probably a bit fitter from the flight and everything and you know, it just we didn't we didn't perform as, as the way we would have liked to in the second now, half. It, it looked as if Carlo were dead on their legs in the first half and that you that you caught them, but it was pretty well around after half time. Uh, yeah. would that be a fair comment? Uh, it would, yeah. Like um we I suppose we were carrying the ball and moving the ball quick and we were up to the pace and then I suppose in the second half it just didn't seem to go as planned. We were, we were a bit shaky and um, couldn't get the ball in, couldn't get the ball to stick. Um, but in the first half, we had runners off the shoulder and the likes of Shane McCarthy, Jack Riley popping over scores. It's just very good, you know. Um, yeah. How would you find the pace of the game out there in the summer, in the summer heat? Uh, it's different. It's a different ball game, especially on that AstroTurf in Gaelic Park. And yeah. when you come back to Ireland, as, as you saw in the Sligo game, yeah. couldn't really, couldn't really get used to it. So we're only after landing in on Friday, and then you know you're trying to get a good sleep and tossing and turning in the bed. Um, and then to play an intense inter-county game, 35 minutes and a half, it's, it's not that not that easy to adjust, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's. It's worth to say on that anyway. I just felt the game it sort of got away from you that you weren't letting Carlos score, but you weren't getting on the ball. And then I think um, the number 18, I can't remember his name now, but he, he brought a great save from the Carlos people. If that had gone in with maybe 10 minutes to go, it might have, it might have given you a bit of energy. 100%, yeah, like the intensity dropped in the second half, but. Um, if that if that goal had gone in there, yeah, we would have been we would have been flying. I thought, um, like we thought, we were, the game was getting away from us. But there's only five points in the end, five or six points. Which if, that goal, if that goal went in, you know, yep. could have been a different result in the end. But yeah. look, we're we're happy that we got the win against Leitrim, and I know Sligo didn't go as planned, but we we're we we're looking for our first uh, Talisman Cup win as well. Which, it didn't happen today, but there's always another time to go next year as well, right? You'd know this pitch fairly well, wouldn't you? I would, you yeah. Played on it yourself? Yeah, I played, I played a minor for Leash against against Carlo back in the day. I also went to school in Knockbeg, so that's yeah. only five minutes down the road. I played for Knockbeg many times here, and I, I'd be used to it, yeah. yeah. Um, it's not a bad stand, and I know a lot of the boys, I know Conor Crowley, Josh Moore, Ross Dunphy, Jordan Marcy from playing them back in the day, so... There's a few familiar faces out there, which is yeah. a bit strange, you know. I didn't think um, I would be playing against Carlo, and it was funny because my dad's Carlo's chairman yeah, as well. I was which, coming to that, George. Yeah. Your, your dad, Jim, is uh, chairman of the Carlo County Board, so yeah. it's a small world. Really, oh, it is, it? yeah. I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever be back here now playing for New York, but, you know, yeah. these things happen, and yeah, of course. Yeah. got to and, embrace it, I suppose, yeah. And are you based in New York full-time, are you? So, yeah, I... Uh, I just moved over there eight months ago in September and then I um, got my visa extended so probably going to be there for good now. Yeah. The next three years at least and hopefully stay playing football, playing with Brooklyn Shamrocks and playing with New York as well so hopefully stick at it and yeah loving life. Yeah, and what, what team do you do? Uh, project manager for a concrete company. And yeah. It's all go, yeah. yeah. Your dad won't want to hear that but you listen. No, not it's at a all. small world now, get on yeah. a plane and you can hop over here or he can hop over here. Oh yeah, it's, 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 it's not that far really. But yeah. yeah, yeah. And have you had many honours in um, New York club level? Uh, I don't. I'm only after moving over, so yeah. I haven't really played much course, yeah. much club yet. It's just been straight into the county setup there in yeah. September. So, yeah. For the latest New York GAA news and other Irish American stories and podcasts, visit thelonghaulpodcast.com.